Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today a really cool tutorial how to create two different disintegration effects. For the first, we'll play with the voxels and clusters that can be used to create nice sand and snow effect. And for the second, we use Phoenix to simulate the smoke that will be used to generate the force. I will show you too how to create millions of particles and apply color gradient to create a really interesting look for your final render. Let's go. Okay, so first I'm going to create a primitive for my simulation. You can of course import and use the mesh you want. So it's always not here. And now the type of setup. Open editor. And for this example, we will use the browse voxels. I pick my mesh. I deactivate initial torus. And I select geometry in the display to see the particle later. I can now add the shape operator. Activate scale and use geosphere low res as 3D shape. Now what I'm going to do is just to decrease the voxel size to add more particles to my mesh. 1.5 is good to start. I can go back to shape and decrease a little my scale. Maybe 70. Okay, I think the mesh is well filled. We will now create the force to bring the particle to life, so force operator. Turbulence with strength 1. Okay, it's good. I will now just play a little with wind to make the force more natural. Okay, I think it's not bad for the force and now what we want to do is to create a lot of clusters, so cluster operator. I just activate visual cluster and when I zoom out, I can see better all the clusters created. We can now scroll down in tab and just really increase the count to have a lot of clusters. What we can do now is just adjust the fuzzing setting to create a little randomness in our cluster shape. I think it will be more natural like this. Perfect. And now we will give a name to our cluster in the channel setting. Cluster. Okay. I don't need to visualize the cluster anymore. We will now create a particle bind operator. Scroll down in the tab to find the cluster setting. Enable clustering. And select cluster in the channel. And now, if I run my simulation, we can see that we have the force and the particle gather red in all clusters. What I like to do is to go to breaking and activate breaker ball that totally break all the cluster and after play with the setting. Breaker ball stretch variation to add more randomness and more organic look in my simulation. Don't forget that the look of your simulation will also depend to the scale of your particle because it's based on proximity binding. So if I decrease the scale, I must decrease my voxel size too. I decrease a little more the value here and we see that the particle bind in the cluster is better. Okay, now we have a good simulation, but uh, I don't want to disintegrate my object instantly. I want to do it gradually. So I will now create a surface test. Now a box. I put it in the right place. I just deactivate my event for the moment. And I move my box with two keyframes that will be used to activate the particles. I go back now to surface test and I pick the box. I don't need the box anymore. Now I select my force and particle bind and I move them to a new event that I link to the surface test. I just wait for the simulation. And we can see now that the simulation is activated by the movement of the box. Good. But if I put the same color in the display, we will see that it's not perfect yet. We can see that we have a lot of small lines created by the activation of the box, and it's not really beautiful and realistic, but it's really easy to fix that. We will just create a time test with a value of 0 and a variation of 2, and place the time test between the two events. And now if I run the simulation, we can see the variation, but I will just put the same color for the display to see better the result. Okay, perfect. Now you can, if you want, just increase your amount of particle with the browse voxel, decrease or increase the shape, go back to your particle bind and play with the setting to create the simulation you want. And after launch your render with your camera, texture, light to have a really interesting result like this with beautiful cluster. 
Oh, one last thing I forgot. If you want collision in your simulation, you just have to create a particle physics operator in the last event and uh, just change the radius to shape. Okay, it's over for this simulation. Now we will see how to create the second effect. We have here the torus like in the first simulation and what I'm going to do is pick my torus and select the large scale smoke preset from Phoenix. I just run a simulation and we see that we have a simple big smoke emit from our shape. We'll now modify some setting. So we are in the dynamics tab and I don't need gravity. And I put the buoyancy to zero because I don't want the smoke to go up. I scroll down now to the output tab and activate velocity because we need that Phoenix export the velocity for type flow later. Okay, now I select the physics source and I will just decrease to 50 the outgoing velocity because I want that smoke talk more to my torus. Now we'll add wind and turbulence to the simulation. So I go to helper, Phoenix, and I select plane force that will create the wind. I can just rotate the icon in the direction I want, maybe like this. And I will just decrease a little the strength. I do the same for the turbulence with maybe a strength of uh, 70 and a size of 80. I will just try to see how it looks. Okay, so what we see here. We see that uh, we always have too much smoke and the force don't affect enough the smoke. So I will just decrease again the outgoing velocity. But the fade start to zero and just increase the strength for my plane force and for my turbulence. Okay, let's run another simulation. Yeah, it's better like this, I think. I can just maybe increase a little more of the strength and the size of the turbulence. I erase the simulation. And now that I think that my low res simulation is not bad, I will just go to the grid tab and increase a little my resolution. Okay, it's look good for the simulation. What is great is that we will not render the smoke, so we don't need a really high resolution for type flow. The middle rest simulation will be enough to create our force. Now I will just show you a little tips. If you already know where your camera will be, you don't need that your grid expand to the infinite because that will calculate smoke for nothing and it will increase drastically your time simulation. To avoid that, you just need to go to the grid, activate the maximum expansion, I put all the axes to zero and you can see in the red the maximum expansion you want for the simulation. You can just adjust the X, Y, Z axis and basically your green grid will never be taller than the red. It's really a time saver when you work with high resolution. Okay, I watch again my simulation, which is good for me. I don't need to see the simulation anymore, so I just keep my torus in the viewport. I now create my type for setup. Open editor, and we will see another way to create particles. I just create a burst with a start and end frame to zero, and maybe a total of particles to 50,000 to start. I now add a position object, and I pick my mesh. I can hide now the torus, and I will create a shape operator. I don't touch to the mesh type. I just activate the scale and I go to display to change the type to geometry to see my particles. I go back to shape and I change my scale, maybe 10. Okay. Now we will create the force, so we will use the fluid force. I change the color to yellow. And I add the mesh to see my particle in the render. I go back to the fluid force and I pick my Phoenix Fire simulation. And now we can see that we have all force from Phoenix who affect our particles. What is great with the fluid force is you can also control the velocity magnitude with add, blend, replace, and your velocity direction to influence the velocity of your force and how your simulation will look for your final render. If I decrease, you see that the simulation is slower and a bit different. Now I go back to the burst and I will increase my number of particles to 1 million. And now I really see how the simulation looks. As I said, you can of course play with your fluid force. And now I again increase my number of particles. It's really great. I just created previously a very light and let's see the render. Beautiful. You can of course activate your motion blur if you want to create a better final render. 
Okay, now I go back to my particle simulation and I will show you how to apply beautiful color to the particles. I just decrease the amount of particles for the moment. And I will now create custom properties. I change the timing to continuous. I go to custom float and I will select velocity magnitude. Okay, why custom float? Because this operator will allow you to select one value. Here's the velocity magnitude, but you can choose the value you want, like scale. And after to retrieve this value to affect another operator to the value. For us, it will be the mapping. Okay, so I just name my channel for the velocity magnitude, velocity, and it's good. And now I create a mapping operator, like I said. I select mapping from custom float and I select my velocity channel. Now the last thing to do is just to go to your material editor and create a material with a gradient ramp and use the color you want. If you don't know where a gradient ramp is, it's map general gradient ramp. Here my gradient and I apply it to my type flow setup. Okay, we see nothing because I just forgot to set the timing to my mapping to continuous. And now this is a gradient color based on the velocity magnitude of our particle. We can of course change how the velocity affects the color with a normalized value. You just have to play with the max setting like this. I increase the total of my particles. Nice. And now a little render. If you are like me in V-Ray, you can play with the color correction and the filmic tone map to improve the final look of your simulation. Like this maybe. Yeah, it looks good in my opinion. This is the method how to apply color based on the value you want. You can, if you want, go back to the custom properties and select another custom float, maybe position magnitude. I decrease the number of particles. And now you see that your color gradient is not based on the velocity but on the position magnitude of the particles in the wall axis. You can now play with the normalized value to affect the color. Okay, it's over for this tutorial. You can, if you want, do like in the first simulation with a surface test if you want to activate the particle gradually. You can, of course, mix the method, standard force or fluid force from Phoenix. It's up to you to try to get the result you want. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful to you. Don't hesitate to subscribe, comment, and give me a thumb up if you like my work. And you can also follow me on Instagram and beyond. See you soon for next tutorial, guys. Bye.